Hey Pandalings, this is the Black Belt Panda and I am back with a elevator tutorial for the Bunker series. Uh, so for this tutorial I'll be using Seth Bling's design uh, which is sort of a conveyor belt elevator system. It's pretty cool. It goes up and down. Uh, its only limitation that I found was that it doesn't go very far. Uh, but we don't need it to go very far for this particular use. So let's go ahead and head into the bunker. And if you haven't noticed, I am using a different texture pack. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, it's a realistic texture pack. Uh, KDS, I believe, realism. Um, so we've got some cool glowing effects here from Mises HD texture pack, which I just tossed in really quick, just because I liked them. So I think that I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna be making the elevator over here. So I just added a little bit of a, a lip here on the wall to cover up where the pistons and stuff are gonna go and <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is get our pistons in place. We need regular pistons and we need sticky pistons. So I'm going to go ahead and move some stuff around here really quick. There we go. Okay, so we've got some regular pistons and now what we want to do is we want to put one piston right there facing outward. And then we want another piston facing downward, two blocks away from it, and one block up. So you can see how that looks right there. And now we want to do the same thing at the bottom. And uh, to do that, you're going to want to count out your blocks. So we've got in from the block under this piston here, we have one, two, three. Let's go over here and count these out. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve blocks before the next piston, which is going to be pointing up. Then we want another piston over here pointing over, two blocks over and one block up. And those are going to be the pistons that are going to be moving the elevator. Um, so you just make sure you go down that many blocks. What was it, twelve blocks? Put your other pistons down, and I just went ahead and you know hollowed out this room here. Uh, and this is uh, another room we'll be doing in another tutorial. I'll be covering. Uh, it'll be an armory. So now we can go back up to the top, and we will put a button here. So we need a button. I'm gonna put the button right here. So there's the button. That's gonna turn it on and off. Whoop. Don't fall down the hole like I did. Okay. Now we can start wiring it up. So what we want to do, first of all, is since we're using buttons, we want to make a T flip-flop. So I'm going to grab two sticky pistons. You don't need sticky pistons. You can use regular pistons for this. I just like to use sticky pistons. I don't know why. <laughs> um... We're going to put those right like that. So sticky piston facing one way, two blocks of empty space, and then two blocks of empty space below that, and another sticky piston over here facing the first one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a block, and you want to put it in front of the sticky piston, on top of that one, and next to that one. And then we're going to put a torch on one side, a torch on the other side and right down there we're gonna put another torch just like that and now you want to make sure to put some redstone on top right there and right there on both the blocks connecting the two torches and that is a T flip-flop made with pistons very fast very efficient so we're going to take the signal from that first of all we'll run the button right here to the T flip flop. So we're running it to the top here. That's the button. So now if we push that button, you see the T flip flop just changed. And now we have power over here. 
All right, so from here, the next thing we're going to do, I've even got a sign here marking it off, is a toggleable 3-1 clock. Now, this was also something uh, that Seth Bling had made. And we're going to make this using pistons and repeaters. So we're going to need a sticky piston. And we want it facing this way, like that. We're going to put a stone block in front of it. And then what we're going to need to do is take a repeater, power the piston. We're going to put another repeater going next to it. Now we want this repeater to fire first, so we need to put a one tick delay on the repeater going to the piston. So now, when we hit that button, whoa, don't fall down the hole. I'm going to have to block off that hole or something temporarily. Let me fly, holy. Okay, I'm going to block off that hole temporarily deal with that when we're ready for it. <laughs> now you can see there's no power. So what's going to happen is when this power comes through the T flip-flop, it's going to send a power signal through this block first and out here to this redstone. And then one tick later, the piston will turn on and this block will slide forward. And then we've got Repeaters here, you want to place them just like this. One there, one there. Then you want to turn around, one there, and one there. Now, <clears throat> it's a little bit complicated if you don't know anything about redstone, but basically, let's see if I can explain this. We've got a one tick signal, so just a split second a pulse will go through this block, and then that block will get shoved in front here. And then that one tick pulse will hit these repeaters and it will constantly be circling through these repeaters because it'll go into this block, into this redstone, through the repeaters, into the block, etc, etc. And it'll be looping forever. <clears throat> um, so I guess the best way I can uh, demonstrate that is to power it and show you. Hang on. <clears throat> What's going on? Okay, rather than run back and forth to this button to figure out why it's not working, it's probably something stupid. I'm just going to put a torch right here and see what it's doing. Is the signal not making it out? No, the signal made it. Oh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That was bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> when you're building this, don't forget the redstone at the end. It is very, very useful. <laughs> uh, won't work without it. There's the 3-1 clock. It's called 3-1 clock because this redstone over here will be off for 3 ticks and then on for 1 tick. You can also call it a 3 clock. Ignore my textures. They look a little funny because I'm experimenting. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> next thing we want to do is send this signal over to the first piston. So we're just going to run the redstone up here and then across here over to that piston right there. There we go. Now we have one piston oops, activating. Now the second one needs to be two ticks delayed. So we're going to come over here. We're going to take this signal. And we're going to run it down here. And we're going to put a repeater right here. And then we're going to run the signal. Continuing on our way to the next piston. And we're going to need one more repeater so we get those two tick delay. So get that two tick delay. Right there. And now this one will be exactly two ticks delayed from the other one.
And I can see they're operating in sync. Sort of kind of see it. <clears throat> Pistons make it a little bit laggy. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. So we can cut out that lag. Okay. I can see, since it pulled that block back, the uh, clock stopped working and everything turns off. Nice and neat. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run this um, redstone signal from the pistons downward. Now you see how I put the repeater in front of this block? I did that for a reason. It'll send the power through the block so I can just get redstone off the back of it and the signal will still go through. So for this I just made a little spiral going all the way down. As you can see right here, redstone wire for pistons. So we're going to run this down and for your build just run it down to wherever you have your bottom pistons and you want two more repeaters. So there's one. So you gotta make sure you have those two extra repeaters. We'll put some uh, redstone there. And here's the second repeater. Right there. And now we want this wire to go to the piston that pushes up because it's coming from the piston that pushes over. This way this will be in sync with the other piston that pushes down. That's important. Now, we'll go this way to the other piston, and again, we want two repeaters because we want a two-tick delay. And we'll just run that around just like that, and that'll run over to this block and power this piston, which will be two ticks delayed from this one, which makes it, and this is the piston that pushes over, makes it in sync with the other piston that pushes over. That is very important. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to run, uh, get down here, I'm getting lost in my own contraption here, we're going to run back up this spiral little staircase thing we ran the redstone wire down, jump up, jump up, alright, here we go. Now we want to wire the button in as well, so we want a button at the bottom to be able to turn it on and off from the bottom. So we're going to take this wire, which is going to the button, and we're going to run this down another spiral little staircase, like we did with the other one, down to the same level, just like that. I'm going to add a repeater, because otherwise the uh, signal will die before we get down here. I'm going to have to go around. Hang on. Alright, so there's the repeater. And we're going to run this straight across here. And up here, like that. And that's where the button's going to be. So we're going to have our button right there. As you can see, button's on that block up there. And the signal will travel through the wire. Make sure your repeater is facing the other way. There we go. Through the wire, through the repeater. We're going to get boosted. Ran up this little spiral staircase, like so, and to the toggle switch, the uh, T flip flop. Alright, so now all the pistons should work. Break that, and we will take a look. So those two are working. Now we gotta make sure the bottom two are working. As you can see, the bottom two are working. So now we're gonna test the button down here. Push the button. And as you see, they stopped. So now we can build the actual elevator pieces themselves. For that, we're going to need slabs and fence gates. So we're going to start with a slab on the vertical piston right there. And we're going to put two fence gates like that. Now make sure you have a back. Let me just quickly put one in here to your elevator going all the way up. Otherwise, you won't be able to put your fence gates in. So you're going to just block off the back, just like that. All right, so then we want slab, two fence pieces, another slab, and then two fence pieces, oops, facing in the right direction, slab, and two fence pieces. Make sure you open the, uh, the fence gates. Make sure you open them. 
and then another slab, and then last two. Oops. Like that. And you have to work from the bottom to the top. So we're going to run down to the bottom now. <clears throat> All right, so now this will push up. So this one we want to push a fence gate over. Fence gate. And then slab. And then I'm going to go ahead and break these blocks that are in my way. Fence gate. Fence gate. Then slab. Fence gate. Fence gate. And then slab. And fence gate. Fence gate. And a slab. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. We'll find out. Now we'll test it out really quick here. Making sure all the pieces look fine. And it looks good. So there we go, we have a working conveyor belt elevator. Turn that off. Double check, make sure all the pieces look good and none of them are off. No, they all look good, cool. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fix up the floor. So we need wooden slab. So we broke one of them to put the floor thing in. Alright, there we go. Down, down, down. And there. And there we go. <clears throat> now the reason this works is uh, these fence gates here are solid when they're closed, but you can walk through them when they're open. Um, so you can actually stand in these two fence gates and on top of the slab. And what's really neat is pistons can still push these fence gates, which means they can push this basically empty space that you can stand in. It's very cool. So you just turn it on, and we're getting on the up one, so you just step on in the up one, and then you wait, tick, 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 and you step off. Just like that. And if you want to get down, you get in the other side, which goes down, and you just walk forward until you end up on it, and then you walk forward when you hit the bottom, and you're off. That's a little bit laggy because I'm recording, uh, but then you can turn it off with the button down here, and we're done. We've got an awesome new uh, piston elevator in the bunker, which is pretty cool. Uh, next episode, we'll be working in this room here, which I dug out. Uh, this is going to be an armory, so I will show you how to quickly build an armory, but uh, we're going to do a little bit more redstone work because we're going to have double doors uh, with um, pressure plates. So you'll be able to walk across pressure plates and have it open both iron doors at the same time uh, with no delay in either of them um, and from either side, and I probably will show you how to make it lockable with like a little... Uh, uh, lever on one side so I can flip the lever and then you know if you come in you can flip the lever and no one else can come in so it'd be kind of cool uh, so I will cover that in the next episode so I hope you enjoyed this one uh, I hope it wasn't too confusing <laughs> um, it does help to have a little basic understanding of redstone but I will link the uh, original tutorial video to this particular elevator uh, designed by Seth Bling uh, I will link you to his video so you can see how he built it um, what I want to do is basically just show you you know, how you could build it in a bunker like this, how you can hide the wiring and everything, uh, because that is not covered in his tutorial video. Um, but I would recommend you watch it, uh, just to get a good, uh, maybe a better understanding of how it works, uh, or how to build it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I also, I would like to know, I did purchase a new microphone to replace this one, because if you don't know, I'm talking into a cheapo Logitech microphone that was originally designed for a video game, um, and I actually had to boost my voice by putting a Pringles can around it, and I made my own little pop filter. Um, so uh, I went ahead and ordered a really nice one, I think. It's the CAD U37. Um, so if you guys know anything about the U37, uh, you can you know let me know if you've had any good experiences with it or bad experiences with it. It's already on the way, but I'd like to know anyway. Um, so you can expect some higher quality audio in my videos once I receive that microphone. Um, and I'll probably start recording some stranded episodes with my girlfriend, the Sleepy Kitten. Uh, once I get that microphone, uh, I might do an episode beforehand, um, just to have one, because it has been a long time. 
and then the episodes after that will all be recorded with the new microphone. They'll sound a lot better. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, look forward to the next one. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like video, uh, the like button underneath the video. And if you have any questions uh, or comments or whatever, just post them below the video. Uh, so thanks for watching. This is the Black Belt Panda, and I will talk to you in the next video.